This is part two um, of our video where we are dealing with rotation of a coordinate axis system. Um, specifically, we have this equation, which is the general quadratic form. General quadratic form, of course, is like this. We have a matrix A, a column vector X, and its transpose, the row vector, on the left-hand side. And we are going to now see exactly where this takes us, remembering what we did in the previous video, that this can be written like this. And we're going to follow up on that now on the remainder of that in this video. Um, remember, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Okay, picking up where we left off in the last video now. Here we have this specific matrix, which we have right here. It is symmetric. Now, the reason why it's symmetric is not because these are identical. Um, in general, or not in general, but always for symmetric matrices, the diagonal elements do not have to be equal, but the off-diagonal elements, they must be equal then when you take the transpose of that, you get the same thing. Here, we have a situation where even the diagonal elements are equal, but they don't have to be for a symmetric matrix. And then, for this, it's a real trivial example. We didn't go through all the steps. But there's two eigenvalues, uh, 2 and 4. I think it was back in videos 17 and 18 when we first started dealing with eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Anyway, for... Um, Lambda value of 2, it has an eigenvector 1, minus 1. And for 4, it's just 1, 1. These are orthogonal. Take their inner product, you get 0. They both have a magnitude of the square root of 2. So divide by the square root of 2, we have a unit eigenvector. And same thing here. And the unit eigenvectors, then, They will be like this. Go over 1 over the square root of 2 and down the square root of 2. There's unit vector x1 and unit vector x2. Go here and here. So here are the two unit eigenvectors for our symmetrical matrix. 3, 1, 1, 3. Now what we want to do is pick up where we left off in the last video. We had, we derived this equation, and now our general quadratic form is this equation right here. That's what we began with in the last video. But now we can rewrite it as this will have components x prime and y prime. This has components x prime and y prime. The diagonal elements consist of the eigenvalues. Those are 2 and 4. And this equals 8. So now, multiply this. We have 2x prime, 4y prime. Multiply it by this. We have this first element is times the first row. The second element is times the second row. So we have 2x prime squared plus 4y prime squared equals 8. Divide through by 8 and we have this equation. Now what exactly are x prime and y prime? We know from our previous discussion that they involve a rotation um, of the xy system. And here they are just simply the eigenvectors of our symmetric matrix. So this, what is eigenvalue x1, unit eigenvalue x1, this, extend it out. For the unit eigenvalue x2, extend it out. And this could be then x prime axis, this, the y prime axis. 
So what we see happening here is that for our x, y coordinate system, what happened is that it just got rotated like this. And these are the relevant equations right here now on our rotated axis. So we have that. Right here, this comes from eigenvector x1. This comes from eigenvector x2. These then are, they comprise our new x prime, y prime axis. And we have this equation. So on the x prime axis, we're going to have points plus 2 and minus 2. On the y prime axis, plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2. That's not quite 1.5, it's 1.4 something. So this is almost 1 and a half, almost 1 and a half. And we can sketch in the ellipse. So here then, this was our equation that we began with. We just simply wrote it in matrix form. We have 3, 1, 1, 3. Remember how we do that. The coefficients on the x squared and the y squared, they are the diagonals. Take the coefficient of x, y, divide it by 2. That's the off diagonal. Then we have a column vector on the right, a row vector on the left, equals 8. That's this equation. This x, y term then results in a rotation of our coordinate axis. Now, in the, um, I think it was video number 38, we dealt with this equation. There's an x squared term, a y squared term, an x term, and a y term, but no x, y term. So this was just simply a translation of our um, x, y system. It ended up looking like this. The center gets translated to the right and down. So here, whenever we see x and y terms together, or it could be just an x term or just a y term, we know there's going to be a translation uh, of the center of our coordinate system. If we see an x, y term, then there's going to be a rotation of it. Now, in this equation, we have an x, y term. So there's going to be a rotation. And there's also a y term. So there's also going to be a translation. So what exactly can we expect from this equation? That is what we will solve in the next video. So we sort of took like a progression of cases. This was just simply a simple translation. Uh, we could handle that just by completing the square. Here, when we had a rotation, the way to handle that then was considering what we learned in videos 33, 34, and 35. When we dealt with the principal axis of transformation. Now, in this equation, we're going to have a translation plus a rotation. So that we will deal with in the next video.